Hey, 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 everybody, what is going on? Serial of Drive here, and today we're going to be going over how to build bases in Rust. This is going to be a beginner's guide to base building specifically for the console version of Rust. I do a lot of console Rust videos. This one is going to be recorded on the PC because I need a build server to do it, but it's going to be geared more towards console players, although these tips and tricks are going to be basically applicable to everybody, no matter what version of Rust you play. So first off, let's get into the two basic base designs. So you're basically either going to have a 2x1 or a 2x2. Two two. The difference between a 2x1 and a 2x2 two two is a 2x2 two two is 2 squares by 2 squares. 2x1 two is 2 squares by 1 square. That's pretty obvious, pretty easy. So there you go. You've got your two basic foundations and Whichever one you choose to do, a 2x2 two two is probably better for big groups or people who are looking to expand a base. Well, 2x1 is a nice base to start off with if you're just looking to sort of have somewhere to begin with and then build the main base somewhere else later. Or if you're just going to build a bunch of bases scattered throughout, this is sort of a good structure because it's fairly easy to maintain. Whereas a 2x2 two two is a little bit more expensive to maintain, but better defensively. So let's get into it. The first thing you're going to want to do, and we're going to just work off the 2 by one here, and then we'll go over to the 2 by 2 so this is going to be a longer video. The first thing we're going to do is add an airlock. Again, both bases are going to need that, but an airlock is basically one of the most important things you could add to a base. If you're building a base and you don't have an airlock, you're doing it wrong. So I'm going to show you how an airlock works. Also, I'm upgrading everything to stone just by default. I've got auto upgrade on, but if you're playing in the game, everything should be stone. If you're logging off and your base is all wood, you're doing it wrong. Literally, you're doing it wrong. So now let's go ahead and make some doors. You're probably gonna start off with wooden doors, but as soon as you can, you wanna upgrade to a sheet metal. So we're gonna go ahead and just make two sheet metal doors to use here, and we're gonna make two locks. You need locks on your doors because if you don't have locks on your doors, then anyone can just open them, pretty obvious. So yeah, when you're building a base, one thing to remember is you wanna build it so that when the door opens, it blocks access to the other door. So you can choose to do inner or outer. This is how I'm gonna design the base right here. So I'm gonna show this off to you. Let's just throw these locks on too. Oh, it looks like it came with code locks, cool. Uh, this is because of the server. You're gonna have to build locks in real life. So here's how your airlock is. And when I say real life, I mean in Rust. So here's how your airlock's gonna work. You've got one door that opens out into this other door and this door is gonna open in. So if someone's door camping you and you get killed right here, they will not be able to get into your base just like I can't get out of my base right now. The only way for them to get into your base is if this door closes, they're in and then you open the door. Now they have access to your entire base, but if you never close that door, they're never gonna be able to get in here. Additionally, when they shoot in, this is the view they get. They can only shoot right here. So anything over here, your TC or anything like that is safe. If you have your TC over here, or if they can get a line of sight in on your TC from that door, what's going to happen is a player is going to come on, or a raider is going to come on. Once they get you with the two doors open, they're going to destroy your TC, and then they'll basically be able to box you in or do whatever they want to troll you. This is not ideal because nobody likes being trolled. So there we go, that's the basic base design. If you do get killed, what you wanna do is you close this outer door first, and now you're safe, you can close that door. Also, I'm not putting on the ceiling tiles, but you should have those on, that should be pretty obvious. So let's go ahead and put down a TC. <clears throat> so TC is a tool cupboard. The way a tool cupboard works is that's what gives you the ability to build in an area. Anyone can build in an area, but once a tool cupboard is down, only the people with access to that tool cupboard can build in the area. When you build a tool cupboard, you want to align it to the walls. On the console, this is way easier than on the PC. So if you're on PC, you're gonna wanna practice a bit. On console, it's sort of auto locks, which is a really, actually like really nice feature that I think a lot of people aren't taking advantage of yet. So let's go ahead and just put it in right here. You can see, again, this is what you want. Smooth and tight next to, next to the walls. So that, that's your tool cupboard, that's down, and you should place this as far away as you can from these doors. The base, basically two by one is always gonna have your tool cupboard right here, but if you're working with a bigger base, the goal should be to make the tool cupboard as hard to get to as possible. If you've gotta use drop boxes, traps, crawling, and all sorts of just little contraptions to hide your toolbox, that's what you wanna do. I've heard of some people, like I, I know people that they'll basically hide it in a sort of like a, I don't know, like a square right off here that looks like nothing because raiders will automatically just go right to the tool cupboard because they want control of that so they can basically put their own doors on and then they can easily raid from inside. So the way a raid works is well, people are busting down your doors. They're making a lot of noise and anyone who hears them is gonna come by and try and kill them. 
Second, they get access to your tool covers, they can put down their own doors, and now they don't have that risk of being killed until they open those doors. So, yeah, basically the goal of any raid is to get to that tool cupboard as fast as possible. If you hide the tool cupboard, that will work, but for two by one, you just put it back here. So now, once you've got the tool cupboard down, what are you gonna wanna do next? The next thing you're gonna wanna do is put down some furnaces. The reason this is important is because furnaces are what you're gonna use to make well, metal fragments and metal fragments. That's what you're going to use to make those doors. So yeah, you're going to put your tool cupboard down. Actually, first let's go over one other thing too. What you do want to do is put down a, basically this, right? So you can put a double door here and then you're going to want to put down a double door. At first it's going to be wood, but eventually you're going to upgrade it to metal or as fast as you can, you're going to upgrade it to metal. The reason I like to do this is because early game, if you're in a really populated area and you're worried about getting killed right off the bat, just build this little shack right here, put those doors on and you're good for a couple hours or so. Eventually someone's going to figure out you're there. They're going to camp your door. And if you open your doors and there's no airlock or anything like that, you get killed. You know, you've just given them the kings, the keys to the kingdom, which isn't good. So yeah, we've got our toolbox right here. Um, also one thing to note early, early game, like when you're first building, if you're going to drop a toolbox down, you can put a lock on it, put some resources in. A lot of people aren't going to bother destroying that toolbox because they figure it's a decaying base. But when you do that, always make sure your two walls are there so that you can line the toolbox up properly. Otherwise, what you risk is a toolbox going off this foundation. And then what's going to happen is you won't be able to build that wall. And that is just a huge mess to deal with. All right. So now that we've got all that down, let's, uh, Let's go ahead and just place some things because I think this is pretty important. So what we're going to want to do here when we place things, this this is my opinion. So there's, there's two ways you can do it. You can make this into a loot room or you can try and fit everything in it. If you're going to try and fit everything in it, you can do something like you can put your, um, so this is, this is how I'd recommend it on the console version of Rust. On PC, it's a lot harder to get this down. But what I'd recommend, put your workbench, your tier one workbench right here. Put a large box right here. Put your furnace right here, small box here, sleeping bag here. And then everything you need is contained inside that one by one square. I like that because what, what's gonna happen, you out here, you're just gonna put a blueprint table, nothing else. And the reason behind this is someone's gonna blow through these two, do two doors. They're gonna see one blueprint table, figure your base is trash, and they're not gonna bother going through these last doors. A lot of people are gonna do it, especially if they watched a video like this, but a lot of people I've noticed have just given up on my base at that point, which means all my loot, like the guns, everything else like that, although it's very small, you can't store that much, it's safe right in here. Most people aren't gonna do that though, because if you're running a proper wipe, you're actually gonna wanna build things up. So if you're looking to do that, and let's say you've put down that, um, you've, you've, you've put down everything I told you to, right? Because at this point you can't build a half wall in the middle, build a half wall on the outside, put this right here, and now what's gonna happen is when you go around to the inside, I just got pushed out the door. That's not what I wanted to do. You go around. All right, let's try this again. There we go. When you go around to the inside, you can put your wall down like this. And that's how you're gonna put your boxes. You can put some boxes up here, boxes down here. A lot of people are gonna worry about the perfect placement of it. If you're new, don't really worry about all that. You can put all your boxes down here, put your workbench here, put your blueprint table there, maybe a furnace or two right in there. And there you go, you're good to go. So that's that's your basic two by one. Also, always remember to destroy these walls. You got five minutes to destroy a wall, so make sure you do that fast. After five minutes, it's permanent unless you can make it decay on your base. So there we go, that's, that's a two by one, and that's sort of the basic two by one right there. It's a very good base for one person. If you're running in a duo, it's a little tight, but you can make it work. Anything bigger than that, and you're gonna want that two by two. So let's go ahead and just work on that base here. Because a two by two is a little bit more interesting. A two by one is pretty standard. Two by two though, you can do a few more things with it. So first things first, let's just go over this again so you guys get it down. Put down your airlock and put down your walls. So let's just go ahead and do that. And actually, let's 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 play this out. Let's say I'm on a busy server, right? So I've got let's say I've got a few walls down. First thing you want to do, slam down that tool cupboard. I'm gonna put it here. So with the tool cupboard and with a two by two base, there's basically three squares that you could put it in. It's gonna be here, here, or here. If you're looking to maximize the raid cost, you're gonna to wanna to use a square here or square here. And I'm gonna show you why. So let's let's go ahead and do that first. So let's, let's put this down. Oops, I see what happened. So my building privileges can't be stacked because these two bases are too close to each other. So let's go runaways. Um, I did have build privileges, uh, but yeah. My mistake there. No worries, we're just gonna do a stream of thought video, so you guys are gonna have to deal with a little bit of dead space here. So let's go ahead and build this. 
And by Dead Space, I do not mean the awesome video game that everybody should be looking forward to that's going to be coming out soon. But the awesome, I guess, uh, remastering of it. So there we go. We've got our two, wall two walls down. Let's throw down that tool cupboard because let's say we're in a high sort of pressure area. Tool cupboard's down. We've got the lock on it. At this point, if someone comes by, they kill you, they're probably not going to bust this open because it's just, it, it doesn't look like much. So now let's go ahead and finish off this. So what are we going to want to do? We've got this right here. So we're either going to want to put our, we'll, we'll probably put the entryway right here, let's say. Actually, let's not do it right here. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it right here. So we'll go ahead and put all that down. And again, when you're building the entryway, make sure that whoever's going to be raiding you, they don't have a huge shot in in case they're doing it while you're online. So again, let's put down that airlock and let's go over that just one more time because it's it's a super important thing to do. So this one isn't actually done right. If you look at this, I can't get an angle on it. Someone could easily get into the base. So you, we, we could go ahead and redo all this, but we're not going to bother. Um, in, in this airlock, what's going to happen is if someone comes in, they can get in here and shoot right through to your TC. They can shoot you. It's really annoying. So you can see why it's very important that you place your airlock doors right. And I, I get it wrong all the time because I'm not paying attention, but hopefully you're going to be better than me. So, all right. So we've got our tool cupboard here. Now, what do we want to do? In my opinion, you put a wall right here, and then we're going to use double doors. So the way this is going to work is you can put down those metal sheet metal double doors at first and what you should be going for in the end or what most people go for is a garage door so let's go ahead and throw down the garage door so now you can see the garage doors are down and the nice thing about a garage door is they just roll right up so they don't take up as much space as that that like sheet metal door is going to take so now we've got all this set up you can put up you know you can do the same sort of loot room if you want to do it here otherwise you can do what i was talking about where you do your basically uh workbench and all of that stuff a lot of people are going to tell you that's the wrong approach to do it because you want a big loot room but it really depends how long you plan to play a wipe for it if you're just in it for a weekend or something like that i found that a two by one works a lot of people are going to say serial that's ridiculous why would you just be playing for a weekend but some of us have real lives we have things to do and we can only play for a weekend and that's okay so yeah that is uh, your basic two by two. And again, you, you, there's, a, there's a ton of different configurations out there. Evil Worst has an amazing channel on stuff like this and expanding on things like this. But we're just going over the basics here. So you've got your two by two, you've got a ton of space. You can slap stuff down wherever you wanna do it. So now let's go over some of the more advanced things that you can do to a base. Two by one, you're probably not going to want to do this too, but let's say you've got a two by two, you're looking to expand it and you want to figure out how to make it harder to raid. So the first thing you'll probably want to do is check out where your uh, TC is. So it's right back there because we put that wall in. So let's check the TC. So it's going to be back here. First things you want to do is honeycomb it. This is going to make it super obvious where your TC is because you've just honeycombed it and honeycombing basically means another set of walls for someone to blast through. Also, a good thing to point out right here is look at these walls. Look at this wall. This is a hard, this is like the side of the wall that you want facing out. This is what's called a soft side, and it's easier for someone to pick out. So what you want to do, go to your hammer and just rotate it. Go to your hammer and just rotate it. And there we go. And let's uh, let's go ahead and let's get the top too, okay? Because that's, that's going to be important. So let's throw down the ladder. There we go. So we got our ladder. Go ahead and drop that down. You, you don't need a ladder. You can you, you can build yourself a way to boost up here. I just thought a ladder would be the easiest way to do it. So let's throw that down. Let's throw that down. Now let's go ahead and throw all these down. So there we go. Now everything is honeycombed. Well, not everything's honeycombed. Just the main part of the base is honeycombed. The more you honeycomb things, the harder it's going to be for someone to get in. So again, you could do a honeycomb sort of like this. Or yeah, let's just, let's just go ahead and do it because... I, I want this to be very obvious and in the past people have complained that I took, I, I went through things too fast. So let's uh, let's go ahead and throw this down then. So we throw down that, throw down that. Oop, we don't need it there. So let's just go ahead and delete that. And again, this is a build server so I'm not really paying too much attention to this stuff. Um, no one's actually gonna raid this space. So let's go ahead and flip that. All right. And they're all being placed incorrectly. This is horrible. Let's go ahead and flip them all. Uh, because it is it is important that you flip these right. And if I don't, and I say I'm just trying to save time, someone's going to comment about it. So go ahead and comment about how I'm placing it wrong, I guess. Because this is atrocious. 
All right, there we go. We flipped it all. So now the base is almost fully honeycombed. The only thing we're going to have left to do is put down those tops. All right, so there we go. We've got the top. Now there's one thing left to do because if anyone comes with a rocket, they can easily blow this out. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to honeycomb the top. Also, I do know I missed this place, but whatever. So you're going to honeycomb the top. I'd recommend doing it like this. So now you've got the top sort of down. If you really want to be super safe about it and you don't mind extra decay, you can put down a low wall or a half wall here. And the reason you're doing this is because of splash damage. If you watch the video I did on raiding, if you're raiding and you shoot this middle point right here, you can do damage or equal damage with a rocket to all four walls. If, however, you have these half walls in, it's not going to be possible. They've got to pick the square. And with a two by, uh, two by two, this is especially important because looking at this, if someone knows that your door is right here, they know this square, this square, or this square is likely the TC. It's likely going to be this one or this one, I'd say, but some people will do this one. But they don't know which one. The harder you make it for them to get to those squares, the more risk they've got. And again, when you've got all those garage doors down, even if they pop into the wrong square, they've still got to blow out some walls, right? Like, they've still got to blow out some doors. It's a lot of C4 they've got to risk, and the harder it looks like it is to raid a base, the less likely you're going to get raided early game. So right here, you've got honeycombing down. You've got the top covered. You're sort of good to go here. This is about as far as you'd want your basic two by two to go. And a two by one, you might not even want a honeycomb, to be honest, because it can get can get ridiculously uh, taxing. So that the, there you go. That's At this point, you've got a pretty decent base, I'd say. And there's your door. Also, one thing that you could do is you, you can start expanding then, right? So let's say, let's say you want to make a top right like let's say you you want to make some way that you can get up you can put something like this in here put a ladder in and now you've got your sort of entryway to the top so let's uh i guess let's play this out right put this in here put this in here and again now you can decide right do you want it to just be you've got only one entrance from the top or do you want two entrances like do you still want a ground floor something like this put in your ground floor entrance then you can put in another one right here. Let's just slam these down. I did the doors wrong again. But you basically, you, you get the picture here. You put this down. Now you've got your sort of entrance way. And let's flip back here. And this is how you get up to the second floor. You just use that little square right there. Now you're up here and you can build the way however you want, right? Like you can just put stuff in like this and Maybe, maybe it leads to, uh, I was going to say shooting floor, but I just put bad walls in there. But yeah, maybe it leads to a second story, whatever it is. That's how you do that. Um, and you, you can put in shotgun traps and all of that, but that's, you, you guys get the basis of it. This is a two by one. We just did a, a, a sorry, this is a two by two. We just did a two by one. And those are your basic base builds. The key points to take away here is you always want everything to be stone and you always want to be using those metal doors. I've seen a lot of people go on and they use the wood doors. I wouldn't recommend that because those are super easy to blow through with a flamethrower. The only time I'd use a wood door, and this is this is if you really want to play some next level sort of mind games, is if you want to throw a wood door on the outside door. So I, I would only do this if you've got a really basic looking base. If you're going to honeycomb or anything like that, players know that you're pretty advanced. They're not going to bother. They're not going to be fooled by a wood door. But if you've got a basic two by one, let's say you've got a two by one like this, right? What I will usually do, a base like this, right? Like I know I'm not gonna have time to maintain and I just wanna play it until my base gets destroyed and I figure it'll happen. Uh, this this is my like sneaky tactic, tactic that a lot of people are gonna comment would never work. I'll put in a wood door that looks horribly placed, make everything look wrong about it, right? And then you put your metal door right after the wood door. Um, in addition to that, I'll throw down a TC and I'll let the base slightly decay. So I'll take these walls basically down to maybe like 490, something like that. Slightly decayed walls. If anybody comes by to raid it, here's what they're going to see. They're going to be coming in and out the outside. They're going to see a wood door that was placed incorrectly, right? Like this doesn't look right. I knew about the airlock, but I didn't know about anything else. And they're going to see a base that has basically, a, 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 it looks like it's decaying. It's got 400, 490 health, something like that. And they're just going to walk away. The reason I decay just 490 or something like that, if someone wanted to blow through with rockets, C4, anything like that, their best option is probably still going to be the doors. And they're not really saving anything by just, the, de the de decay isn't saving anyone anything. Maybe if they're using bullets, it would save a few bullets, but that's about it. 
So most people aren't going to bother with the base now. They're not going to see it as a decayed base and want to raid it ASAP. They might come back later and find out that it's not decaying anymore, and that might clue them into something. But that's a, a lot of raiders are going to see that, and they're, they'll just run by the base and figure it is what it is, and they won't come back and raid you. So a base like this with the nice inside can actually be the way to go if you want to wipe that you're fairly left alone with. But, you know, some monstrosity like this is going to be good. And what people are probably asking right now is why I'm not building one of those tutorial bases. And to be honest, the reasoning behind that is because those bases are pretty easy for a lot of people to raid. A base like this is more confusing to people than not, right? They're going to come in and they're not going to know what's going on. They're going to wonder why I made choices, why I designed things the way I did. And they won't be able to quite tell where that TC is. If you build a base that looks exactly like a base on YouTube, any raider is going to know what that base is, and they're going to be able to raid it because they know exactly where the TC is. They'll know how much explosives it will cost them to get there, and they'll know the fact that you put all this time into watching YouTube videos means that you're probably, you know, a little hardcore on Rust, and that means that you probably have good loot. So yeah, I, li I like to just freestyle it, build some random bases. They might not be optimal as far as defense goes, but I find that they work a lot better than any sort of base that I can find on YouTube because if I copy the exact design, generally what happens is someone will know exactly how to rate it. So now let's get into some tips and tricks because I did tell you guys I would do that. So the first one I've got here is if you want to do something like this, let's actually, I did that wrong, didn't I? So if you want to build like, let's say you build like a tall wall like this, right? And then your next square, oop, actually, hold on. Sorry about this. I'm getting it wrong. Jesus. Um, so if you build your square like this, okay, and then you build another square next to it, like a two by one, two by two, whatever, you, you pop it up. What you can do is you can put down furnaces right here and use that to step on. So let's go ahead and craft some furnaces. Let's do some Christmas themed furnaces here. I don't think I'm going to need to do multiples on this server. So let, let's just build this out. So you can put your half wall in here. And then you can do sort of your normal, I don't know, airlock. There we go. All right. So there you go. And then what you can do is you can put your furnaces down here. You should be able to fit three of them in here. And now you've got three furnaces in your airlock. You're not wasting space. And you can still get sort of full mobility on here. Whoops, that was not what was supposed to happen. But yeah, you can still get full mobility on here. So if you look, I can still run around. I'm not dropping down. I don't have any issues with it. Let me actually put this back here so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. So you've just got the three in here. Nice place for furnaces. Three furnaces, you're good to go. So yeah, three furnaces, you can fit them right in there. Really easy. And... The only disadvantage to it's going to be if someone kills you with your airlock open and you've got materials in here, they're going to be able to take it. So my recommendation is if you're going to be using this tactic, make sure that you're very careful going in and in and out or better yet, only use those furnaces when you're logging off because then no one's going to be opening those doors and you should be safe. So that'd be my first tip. Second tip, let's just build another airlock here because why not? Um, so if you've got an airlock like this, right? One thing you can do early game and I've said this in many videos, to sort of make it a little bit harder on raiders is you can throw down a furnace right here. When you come in, you just come in and uh, pick it up. But yeah, that's going to make it a lot harder for raiders to break through your base because now they've got to go through, let's say maybe you just have wood doors. They've got to go through the wood doors, and in addition to that, they've got this annoying furnace to break through. Also, let's say you want to take it next level. If you're on console, currently workbenches do not take damage when you pick them up. So let's say you've got a, a tier three workbench. That's a ton of health right there that you're gonna need. So a ton of health right there that some raider's gonna have to blow through. So you could just drop that right in front of your door. I don't know what world it is that you have a, um, a wood door and a tier three workbench, but if you exist in that world, this thing's gonna save you so many so much time because players are gonna break through and now they're greeted by this workbench. They've gotta break through that workbench, which A, now means that they can't run away with your workbench. Unfortunately, it also means that you won't get that workbench if someone successfully, you know, fends off your, you know, your raid. But the nice thing here is it's just one more obstacle for them to deal with. So as much stuff as you can throw in front of a door before you log off, the better it is because it just makes it harder on other players to raid you. So yeah, those are two tips there. Now let's get into some shotgun trap placement. So what I see with a lot of people when they build a shotgun trap is they're going to do something like this. So let's just throw a door in, let's throw the wall in. 
Let's go build that shotgun trap. So there we go. We've got our shotgun trap. Let's put that down there. They're just going to put their shotgun trap. I don't know. They'll, they'll put it so it's facing the door, right? It's just, you know, they open the door, comes out, it shoots them. You know, you open the door, boom, shotgun trap shoots you. All right, that's fine. Some raider is going to be able to drain that pretty easily, right? Because, you know, you just stand off to the side. The shotgun trap fires a bunch of times. It runs out of bullets. Now you keep going. If you want to make it a little bit harder on someone who's trying to raid you, what, you, what I'd recommend doing is something like this. Put this down here. Put a half wall here. Oops, wrong. Whatever. It doesn't matter. We can work with it. Um, put a half down wall like that. Half wall down like that. And then put it right here. And then what you do... So you put your shotgun trap. Let's flip this. Right there. So now what's going to happen is you put your main floor down here. And you can do a floor like this or like this. I usually do it like this, but it doesn't really matter. You can do something like that. Um, my re Usually what I like to do. Oops, I can't destroy it. <laughs> Let's, we'll, oop. You, oh. How come I can't? I thought I'd be able to destroy this, but I can't. All right, let me try this again. Something just popped up on my computer and threw me off there. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, so let, let's just go through this again, right? Put your airlock down here. Put one floor down like this. This one up like this. And this is more of a trap-based design, but it's also a really nice sort of defensive introduction to your base, I guess, from a, uh, you know, if someone's raiding you, you want to make it as hard as possible, and I think this would do it. So you put your doors in like this. What I usually do is put a half wall here. Half wall here, full wall, full walls like that. There we go. You put your shotgun trap right there. We can also, if you want to do it for like dual use, you can sort of put one in right here. So there we go. We've got one, just, just sort of a half wall drop down right here. So what's going to happen is if someone raids your base, a, from the outside, your base looks a little weird, so a lot of people aren't going to rate it based on that because if they come up with a hammer, they're going to look and be like, okay, what's what's going on with this? And why is you know why is this wall sort of like that? But a lot of people are not going to look at it. They're just going to they're going to think this is foundation. They're not going to notice when they stand here, it doesn't light up like this one does. A lot of people don't check that. So what's going to happen? They're going to see the ceiling up a little high, think that maybe you messed it up. Maybe they'll leave you at this point. But anyways, they blow through your doors, blow through this door. They're not thinking. They drop down. These two shotgun traps shoot them. And the key here is it's going to be a lot harder for them to get at these traps. You can use a grenade. You can use rockets shot down or something like that. But these traps are a lot harder for someone to drain. So it's uh, it's a bit more annoying for them to raid your base. And a lot of people aren't going to bother with your base just because of that. The one thing to avoid doing is putting something down that they can jump on. So if someone can jump like this, now the shotgun traps might be going off. They might not. But no matter what, you're not going to be killing them. And what you want to do ideally is kill any raiders that come in. So the hope with these shotgun traps is that someone's going to fall in here, get killed by the shotgun traps. Maybe they won't be able to retrieve all the explosives they came in with. And now they're going to get counter raided. It's going to make it a huge mess for them and they're not going to bother. So yeah, that's um, that's a few tips and tricks there. I guess the other, the other thing that probably everybody should know... Let's just put down, let's, let's just talk about um, stairs and really how you should be doing this, okay? Or how you should be going up and down in your base. You should do something like this. So let's put a, a ceiling in. Oop, not what I wanted to do. Let's put a ceiling in right here. All right, let's try it again. Ceiling in right here. There we go. All right, let's put, put this. So here, here's, this is like, let's say that this is sort of your inner sanctum. You've got a TC here or whatever. It's your bottom floor. There's no doors into it. And the way you get in and out is just by using a ladder, okay? So you use the ladder, you jump to your second floor, and this is where you're going to have your exit and everything like that. What you can do here is you put a shotgun trap facing this way. And, of course, you're going to want to put in a garage door too, right? Like, it just makes sense to have your doors in line. Um, but, again, it's, it's going to be a trap that's a lot harder for someone to raid. Because the way this is going to work, you're going to come down here, 
first they've got to blow this up, which can be a little difficult because now they've got to like angle themselves a little bit better. Maybe if they're an unexperienced raider, they're going to kill themselves. Most likely they won't. They blow through this door. Now they've got this shotgun trap to deal with. And a lot of people, what's going to happen is right away they'll be killed. And it's a lot harder again to drain the shotgun trap. They're going to have to drop down multiple times to drain it. It's a lot harder for them to blow it up because now if they throw a grenade or anything like that, they can't quite get to it. Sure, they blew through one of your doors. But they're dealing with the shotgun trap, and if they're inexperienced, a lot of their loot's going to be down here. Also, you're smart, so what you did is before you logged off, you picked up that ladder, so they've got to put their own ladder down. You just make it an annoying process. And maybe back here, you've got your TC or whatever it is, right? But you can see that's, like, that's the trick, right? You put the shotgun traps in the most like opportune places, and you hope that people are going to fall for it. Generally, you're not going to be able to stop someone from raiding you, but some people won't go in with enough explosives, and just having something like this is enough to throw their whole raid off, and now they're sort of screwed. Um, so yeah, that's, that's just a few basic base building tips. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones, because there, there's there's plenty. Um, as far as like windows and stuff go, let's just go over that. So let's say you've got windows like this. If you throw down a small box, you can step on top of that, and that's actually a nice little sort of way that you can look down a little bit um um here we go so yeah let's throw down a small box i'll show you what you can do with that so if you throw down a small box like this it can give you a little bit of a step up so if you're shooting down at someone now you can look down a little bit easier also that's a good way to get through windows so one thing you could do for your base is you can use windows instead of doors it seems a little weird at first but this actually does work out so you put down your small boxes like this create some windows here so you're like you're legit and you've got some reinforced windows right so what you're gonna do you throw down your window like this and now when someone goes to raid you they've got to deal with this window and this wall and it's a super annoying process for them and all you've got to do when you're online pick this up and you can just easily walk through just like that so yeah that is um that's, that's the basics to building in Rust. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully this was informative for some of you. If you made it this far into the video, I really do appreciate it. Um, it's a little bit slower, a little bit different style from what I usually do, but hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this was helpful, whether you're on Rust on the PC or on the console. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all the support people have been showing me recently. And, you know, let's just, let's just keep it up. Let's keep going and let's... Um, Make cool things happen in the future. Thank you so much. Until next time, peace.